All right, so let's just go ahead and add on to this build or thing and actually get some real data here. So you remember in my code, I added the ability to basically um, inside the submit build page, I have the ability to select a race or, or sorry, a matchup. And when you select the matchup, it's going to change the units that you have to build. And I want to kind of fill that out with all the real units that we could potentially use. Um, so let's just go ahead and do that. So Zergling supply of one, um, we got a roach, that's a supply of two, overlord, that's a supply of zero, um, infester, I think there are two, I don't even remember at this point, there's ultralisk, ultralisk, I think there are like four, but I actually need to go to like Starcraft 2 zerg units supply costs, maybe they have like a nice way to like a nice site that tells you all this stuff. They have a nice little table here. I think these should be good. Roach is two supply. Baneling. I guess we should put a Baneling here. And technically it doesn't take up supply. It just morphs your current Zergling into a new unit. So I think I could say supply zero. Um, I'm also going to zoom in because I forgot to do that. When I record, I usually zoom for the two. Just so you all can potentially watch on your iPhones or your, your tablets or whatever. So we got Roach Queen. Should probably put a Queen here. I'll say copy this one. Queen supply of two. Hydralisk. Name Hydralisk. And honestly, like this whole video is gonna be me just like getting some real data in here. Okay. Mutalisk. Keep it lowercase just to keep it consistent. And I will just go ahead and copy that. Corruptor. Supply of two. Infestor already did. Swarm host supply of three. Ultralist is six, so let's go back and fix that. Here. Um Vipers a three. Broodlord is a two, so let's go ahead and add that. And then an overseer. Now most people I don't think even put like overseers and stuff in their build orders. Maybe they do. I guess it depends on how specific you want to make your build order. Let's do the same thing for the buildings. So for the structures we have hatchery, spawning pool, Evolution chamber. Let's go ahead and add an evolution chamber. Evolution chamber. Do the same thing for, oh, I think we did extract already. Uh, probably a spore crawler. Fine crawler. Need a roach or in. Baneling nest. Layer and aspire. Layer. This doesn't take any supply. Aspire. Doesn't take any supply. Oh, wait, that takes one supply. What am I talking about? I'll say negative one. Hydralisk din. Hydralisk din. Negative one. Nidus network. Infestation pit. Hive, that doesn't take any supply. Ultralisk cavern, cavern, ultralisk cavern. And a greater spire. Greater spire is an upgraded structure, so you don't need that. All right, so now I think we have all of the structures and all of the buildings or units that you can build as Zerg. Now, if we go back to our Cation, they all show up here. Okay, so I can kind of go through it. I can click different things like that. Make sure that everything seems to increment properly. Test out our data. Make sure it's good. And it's probably good to also double check that we didn't have anything off here. 
Um, like these should make sure you have all the supplies that are correct. But it looks pretty good. What I'd probably do is I'm going to reduce the size of the build order thing because honestly, like, I don't think we'll need that much information or that much. Uh, you know, maybe we'll change this to a table. Again, like I mentioned before, we don't want people editing this, but we do want people maybe adding like a little note here. This part of the build, right? So this part of the build, someone can like put a note that says like, you need the scout or like, I don't know, scout after building this drone, something like that. Or maybe here you could say, go for a push, go for an all in. I don't know. Let's convert build order to a different, um, a different component. Like we want to use like a table maybe, or maybe our own custom thing where we can add things in. Um, yeah, maybe a table. So where do we do this? So there's a text area here that says build. And this is probably going to also change the way our data structure is set up. Well, I guess technically we don't need to. Um, we could just split everything by new line and put those new lines and split them by spaces or something. Uh, I don't really know. But anyway, let's try to make a table here. I'll just say table. We'll say T head. Then we'll say, I think it's T row T H. And we'll say supply. We'll say unit slash structure. And then we will also say note with that. And then for here, I'll say T body. And then we'll say, a, we'll probably have to map over something. So what we're going to do is the way we're doing this right now is we have a bunch of units, or I think we just have some text that we append things to the end of by a new, new line character like this. So what I'm actually going to do is we're going to kind of keep this structure, but we're going to separate some of the stuff with hyphens and stuff. Actually, no, no, we're not going to do that. Um, I'm going to make a new thing here called like build steps. Set to build steps. And this is going to be an array. So use state going to be an array of something and I think we what we want to do is we want to make a new type I can say type build step probably prefix with the T and that's going to have a supply which is a number it's going to have a unit uh, which will be a string and then it's going to have a note which is a string and this is going to represent what we're storing here every time and as we push new build steps here we want to basically append I'll just say like build steps Dot, dot, dot. And we want to append a new one here. Okay, so we need the supply. We need the unit name. So I think it was unit step name dot name. And then we need a note, which in this case, we'll just put an empty string for right now. Uh, but we might add a way to come back and modify that. So instead of saying set build order here, I'm going to do this. I'm going to save this and figure out why this is complaining. So it's saying build steps. Uh, I probably need to say as e build step. Okay, that's still not working. Um, wait, what did I put here? Let's go up here. This needs to be an array of build steps. Make sure you type your stuff correctly. Okay, and we're pushing as a build step into this array. Now it is complaining about something. What is it complaining about? Actually, I think I could just not put that. Uh, why is this complaining? Oh, I need a ending bracket here. Okay, because this matches the interface for my type, I think it doesn't complain. I think it's fine, which is why you don't need the as e build step. So now, like as you press on the drones or press on the structures, it pushes an actual like object with a certain interface into this array. And what we could potentially do is find out where we're rendering that out, which is the text area here. And we want to make this still work. Right now it's going to be completely broken. Um, but on the table itself, what we could do, like we don't even need this anymore. Let's just get rid of that. At least I think, I think we don't need it. Okay. Um, actually, what class was on that? I might need to keep the class here just so I can put that on the T, the table. There. 
looks a little better. Now, obviously, the styling's bad. I need, I need to go to my uh, Flowbyte site I, I've been using to get a table. But as we push things onto this, we need to map over them. So I'm going to say build steps dot map build step, and we want to render out a t, a t row for every single build step. And then we're going to have, say t d build step dot supply, um, and then we're going to say unit, and then we will say note. Okay, we probably need to put a key here. So let's say build step dot. Uh, you know, I'll just put index. It's fine. I don't think we're going to be able to sort these things, so it's fine to do uh, index, potentially. Um, obviously, the text alignment is kind of weird. I'm not sure why the T head is text aligning center, but then this stuff is text aligning, like, middle. Um, w full, rounded. Do I have, like, a text center here? I don't know what half of this stuff is. Let's just delete it. Okay, let's start simple. I definitely want W full, make it full width. And that's probably good enough. Now I'm going to go to Flowbyte and try to find an existing table style. I'll say table. And we're going to go ahead and try to find a table here. And we just want the cool styling. So like really what we want is on the table itself. It's text small, text left, text gray, like this. Um, I'm going to put that on the table itself, like this. And then again, we're not worrying about dark or light mode right now. Like, obviously you would in the future, but I'm trying to reduce the amount of extra things I need to uh, test. So this should actually be text white. Um, and then for the T head, let's just copy, you know, I'm just going to keep it simple for myself. I'll just paste this stuff in and I'll worry about getting, getting rid of some of the other stuff later. Um, this is a PXPY on the TH. Now, obviously you need to refactor these, a class name that, and let's just continue on. Now for the T body, this needs a class as well. So let's say TR and the T body, which is in here. And, uh, you know, the more I use Tailwind, the more I kind of don't use Tailwind anymore. It's just, I'm just polluting all these divs with the same styling. Like, why would I want to copy and paste this onto all these different things? It's kind of messy, but you know what? It is what it is. So let's just try to figure out why there's no padding between my stuff, but theirs has some padding. It's kind of weird. Padding Y and padding X. If you look here... Do I not have padding on my stuff? I don't. PY3, PX6. Go ahead and look at this element real quick. I'm going to inspect this and try to figure out why my rows don't have any type of padding on them. I guess I need to put them on the TDs in themselves. So let's just go ahead and copy this. We'll put them on the TDs like that. We'll call it a day. I think that'll look okay. All right, so it doesn't look great, but it looks better than it did before. Um, so again, like the idea is you can click on your different units and it adds them to your list and it increases your supply, stuff like that. It might be cool to be able to delete one. So let's say your build order is cool, but like you just need to... You don't want to build that extra overlord, or maybe you want to change the ordering. Um, so yeah, maybe we do care about ordering, kind of. Um, but maybe let's let's worry about note. So after you pick a unit, we want to be able to specify a note. Um, what's the best way to do that? For right now, I'm just going to put a text area inside of that column. Maybe not even a text area, maybe like an input box. So I could actually say like, input the value is equal to build step dot note that um, and then probably on change we are going to say e dot target or sorry uh, I'll do this and I will say set build steps and this is where you kind of want to use emmer because to update that single thing kind of a pain right um, now people say mutation's bad, 
But if you do it properly, I think it's fine to do. So when you do an on change here, what we want to do is we want to find the build step. Well, we already have the, the build step here, but we want to update it and replace the existing one with our current build step that we're going to update. So we can say like new build step is equal to, and then dot, dot, dot build step, and then note is e dot target value. And then somehow we want to overwrite the existing build steps with the new one in the same exact position as it was before. Now, to be honest, I don't even like want to do this off the top of my head. I think I could go like react replace um, object at index in array. Okay, I've done this like maybe a couple times in the past, but it's just kind of hacky the way you have to do it, I believe. You do a map and then you check. All right, so basically what I could do, I might not even need to do this, but I could set the build steps and I could say build steps dot map, build step, this. And then for every build step that we encounter, we can say if the build step, in fact, I can do a ternary, if build step is triple equal, like the same reference as the build step we're looking at, then we're going to return a new one. So I'll say, I'll just do this. This code looks super bad right now. I'm going to save it and it should look pretty. Otherwise, we return build step. Okay. All right. So this, obviously, you, want, you don't want to inline this function. So I'd probably abstract this away into a function called, like, update build step. I'll say function handle note updated. And that's going to do something. Let's go ahead and paste that in. We take an E, I'll say react event or HTML event. Actually, what is it called again? Let's go down and hover over. I always forget these. Um, it's like a hover over this on change. You get a, what do you get? Change event handler. Change event handler. I thought it was called like React event. React, wait, wait, React dot input on change. You know, sometimes I feel like I'm dumb. So let's go ahead and just like hover over this again and I'm gonna grab I think we can do that. Just type it. Is that going to work? Go ahead and delete that. Delete that. Change event handler HTML input element. Is that the proper way to do it? It doesn't seem like it because now I don't have an e dot target. I might be able to say e dot current value, but that's not going to work either. So let me just go look this up. Tailwind. Not Tailwind. Type script React on change proper type of input on change. I swear, I always change this. I, I always forget about this. React.form event. Generally, event handler should use e.currentTarget.value. Okay. As mentioned by whatever change event more suitable for typing form events. React form event. React change event. Uh, I think this might be the way to do it. I don't really know. And then you should have e.target.value here. You know what? Or a better way that you could do this, if you want to abstract this function away from like the DOM itself, you could say new note value. Don't know why I didn't think about this before. And then you could simply just call that down here at the bottom where the on changes. And I could simply just call it like this e.target.value. Okay, I'll, maybe that's probably a better way to do it. Okay, so now we have this function that doesn't care about E, it just cares about the value that you're passing in. And let's make sure that we pass change that there. All right, so it looks pretty sloppy for right now, but you can actually like type into the input and the note will update. So obviously we don't want to render out the note here. And then we could add some more functionality to have like a pencil icon when you click on it, or if you just click on this in general, um, like this could be a span which in terms of accessibility probably that shouldn't be a span that's clickable but 
we're just going to hack at this right now. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a display the note. And if you click on the note, change it to an input that is editable. You could also probably keep it as an input, but then just change the styling if it's selected. That might be a cooler way to do it or a better, more accessible way to do it. So that people can still like tab through notes and stuff. Um, so let's try that. I'm going to say on focus. On focus, handle note focused. Let's see if we can do this. I'm going to say function handle note focused. And then I'm going to go ahead and take in the note or the, the build step. Uh, T build step. And I want to go ahead and say focused build step. So where is, let's go over here. <clears throat> you know what? I, I, I don't need to do any of this. Hold on. I don't need JavaScript to do this. I can use CSS, right? So I think with Tailwind, I mean, I could simply just give this a class name and say like focus. And then I could say background BG white. Okay, but if you're not focused, I will say BG of. Is there a transparent? There. So now if you focus on these, they actually turn the inputs. That's, I think that's cool. Give that a padding of two. Maybe that's a little bit too much. Um, let's just do a padding of one. There. So now you can actually like modify these. Now they all point to the same build step. That's that's a problem, right? So we need to make sure that handle note note updated um, is not modifying all the same build steps. So let's go back to our map function. I think it's completely broken. Okay, so if the build step is equal um, to the one that we passed in. So the issue is like, um, I'm gonna say original build step is a T build step. We gotta keep track of the one that we're trying to modify so that we can like by reference update the one that we're loop, loop, uh, looping through. So I'm gonna say build step and make sure you pass in that new string of the note value. So each of these should be separate. They should be in isolation from each other. So if I just refresh the page and add some, all of these should be like separate in separate editable entries. I still don't like the, um, the styling here. I think if you hovered over this, you should probably change this also. So let's do a hover. I'll say like hover uh, BG white as well, just so that people can know like when they hover over it, Okay, they can tell it's like an input box. I don't know, I'm not a UX person, but I think keeping this as a text area is better for accessibility, more, more than likely. <clears throat> Instead of doing some weird like hack where you have it like a button, you click it, it changes the button, like the span to an input, and then you modify the input and click a save. So anyway, we got this ability to add notes to all these, pretty cool. And uh, yeah, I think that's good progress. I mean, we added all the units and structures. I do want to click through all these just to make sure that these all are clickable and nothing crashes. Seems like it's pretty good. Obviously it's going off the page. So we either need to like add it to a scroll area, something, but I think this is a good enough addition for this video. I don't want to record for too long. I'm like having trouble thinking, but maybe next video we will continue working on the other races here and maybe, you know, refactor the back end to be able to support holding this build order array or something. Technically we can get away with just storing a string in the back end database as well. And then doing some logic in the front end to like split it by new lines that might run into issues in the long run. Um, especially if people like submit build orders with a bunch of different spaces and stuff. But again, just keep it as simple as you can as you're prototyping stuff out and uh, see how it works. So if you enjoyed watching, give me a thumbs up, press that subscribe button, press that bell icon. And like always, I got a discord. You can join if you talk to me directly or if you just want to get help with programming. Have a good day and happy coding.